There's no more delaying. We're adding in the spice, brother, and getting our nuclear fuel rod production online. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time we went around our world and did a world tour, going over the lore and planning of the things we're working on, so that if you're new to the series, you kinda have some idea of what the heck is going on here. Or if you're a longtime fan, you can catch up and see how far we've come. But now today, we are going to pick up where we left off before the tour, which was on our nuclear project. And we only have one more thing to do, and that's make the nuclear fuel rods themselves. Because we have all the encased uranium cells, we've made the crystal oscillators and beacons, and we've built all the production lines for our electromagnetic control rods. However, there have been some changes since last time. Number one is this big hole here, where I used to have half of the electromagnetic control rod assemblers at, but we moved them over there so we could have this here, which is going to be our upper base hypertube hub. So way down here on the floor with our airport and everything, we're gonna have a new hypertube hub and that takes us to all the areas in the upper side of our base. So, over this bridge we have our airport, very lovely. And then right over here, this is the doorway which leads to this upper area. The reason we need to do this is because our hub downstairs has a bit of a hard time reaching up here, like, we do this weird thing with the floors and then there's this and all that and it's, it's kind of a mess. So instead now, we're separating things to upper and lower tiers. And that'll just make things a little bit easier on myself here. Cool. So, it's not all hooked up just yet, but we're using a hyper tube booster to kind of just launch us up to where we need to go. And this will continue up the remainder of our base along with our internal item spine. So all the items will go up over there, and we will go up over here. The rest of the floor space is for working. Speaking of working. The machines here aren't working just yet, but on a live stream over on Twitch, I went ahead and I gathered up all the items we needed to get this bad boy moving and grooving. Behold, all the spice. So we needed around 1,600 uh, copper ingots, that's it. About 700 and so steel ingots. And then we needed about 90 caterium. And that will make sure that our electromagnetic control rod production works efficiently. So, I've left myself some notes. What did I say? Past Kibbs. 525 copper CS. So copper sheets. Okay. So that's going to go into this system, making the copper sheets. Gotcha. Is this all set up properly? Oh yeah, you better believe it. Man, past Kibbs, he's a smart guy once in a while. All right, so you come with me. Belch, you hook up over here. And this whole system comes to life beautiful. And this will make all the copper sheets we need for the AI limiters. That's always cool. Neato. So that's number one. Number two is going to be all the quick wire here. So that's what you are for. 440 copper for quick wire. Thank you, past Kibitz, what a gentleman. That will be an absolute poop ton of quick wire. Very nice, does everything end up at the same spot? It should. Oh, oh, this is so weird. Oh, <laughs> this is always so fun going over production lines because I re-find out what the heck I was doing. But we split up the quick wire, so half the quick wire goes through half of these assemblers and then the other half enters over there. Yeah, and there she goes. <laughs> <laughs> totally safe. Totally will never fly off conveyor belts ever, by the way. 100% safety here at Kibbs Factory. Smile. Anyway, that's all that for AI limiters. The other thing we needed were stators for the electromagnetic control rods. I'm getting really good at saying that, by the way. <laughs> and really, we just need the steel, which is going to here. Now make steel pipes, and then the copper is going to go and make the doodly doos wire. Oh yeah, we need an absolute maddening amount of wire. So this is all making the wire, that's all making the pipes, and once everything is produced, we'll have wire, 
We'll have steel pipes making the steel doors and the steel doors go over to there and make the control rods. Oh yeah, brother, let's go! Steel door production online. AI limiters moving and grooving ever so slowly as well. It's all good. Now everything comes on down to here. Cool. And from here, we have to take all these control rods and bring them all the way over to there. Not a problem at all. If only we had a hyper two launcher to launch items just across the map. But no, we're gonna have to bring these things to trains and do a few other shenanigans. So you come with me, friend. That sends all the rods over this way. And I've already prepared the item spine a little bit here. This will enter our main spine and go down all the way to our second phase warehouse. Don't lag and die, please, thank you. Just down here. And that's where the party kind of stops because now we not only need to get the electromagnetic control rods back to the nuclear facility, we need to get some of our crystal oscillators because we need 30 crystal oscillators per minute. And we're not producing enough over at that factory in order to cover that. So we're gonna have to ship both 30 crystal oscillators per minute and the 105 electromagnetic control rods per minute. So our crystal oscillators right now are right over here. We're making about 262 of them per minute and they're doing nothing. I was sending them into the resource sink mainly. But now we have to scoot them away and we'll just drain the rest of them into the resource sink. Off to the races you go. Let's get an easy couple million points here. Cool. Easy free two tickets. Let's go. <laughs> but now things get a little complicated because we have to do load balancing here. So of course we don't want all of the crystal oscillators going down to the nuclear stuff, right? We only want 30 and we need to load balance a little bit. So it's not super difficult like the balancing we'd have to do. We just need to make a 30 belt. So we just have a da 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 da. There we go. And we have the full belt coming through here. It splits through there to a 60 belt into another splitter. So 60 goes in there and six, uh, half of that 30 will merge back. And then the other 30 goes over in that way. So yeah, now we have a 30 belt of crystal oscillators effectively. The thing is, I don't know if this is like the right space for it or if we should have it somewhere else, but you know what? YOLO, we can move it somewhere else if we have to. Let's just go with it. And from here, of course, we're gonna use a Mark V belt for these 30 items per minute. Only makes sense. Why is that wall there? I don't know. We just have to get this to the ground. Huh, maybe we could use that wall? Or we could just make a new wall. So this will come on up. Rad, we're trying to get to the middle. Okay. Easy peasy, brother. And then you, sir, come with me and go to there. Perfect nine degree turn as well. Everything was placed out properly. Wow, big brain. Except for one thing. This is gonna go all the way down. Oh no, 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 big brain, big brain. And this will go from the other side and go to here. Nice. So now we have everything we need to bring back in this warehouse. And I think from here, We'll bring all of the items out into one of the spines that we have outside here. So behind our base, we have these giant towers and all they do is bring items up. But now, looks like some of them will bring items down. All right, not bad. But realistically, I'm super lazy. So now we just have towers that bring things both up and down. And with this line here, all of the oscillators and stuff go down this tower right on the end there. Go all the way down, all the way over to this train station area, and then they'll be shipped out. Cool beans, cool beans. So they end up downstairs, right over here, and this train will bring them to the nuclear stop. And over here is where the fun begins. Because not only are we bringing stuff here, but we're gonna bring stuff back to base as well because we're only using two freight cars for the two items. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven empty freight cars on the train as well. And what I plan to do eventually is bring over all the extra items from over here, which are being gathered in the Northern Forest, 
bring them to the nuclear train stop, and then have those all go back to base. So we'll mess with that later on, because we probably will be doing some processing here as well. And that way we can utilize all the space that we have out here, and the fact that it's all close to water. So that's all good! Meaning we have all of the items then, to actually make the nuclear fuel rods. And since we're making 105 electromagnetic control rods, that divided by 2 equals... I have no idea. That's why we have calculators for this. 52.5! What? Wait, what? Really? Oh my god. Wait a second. And 52.5 times 0.6? This is the number of crystal oscillators. 31.5? Oh my gosh! We're gonna be making 52.5 nuclear fuel unit manufacturers. What? 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 Who? What? That's gonna be like two floors of manufacturers, brother. Oh my gosh! Dude, I had no idea. I thought this was like the big meme of the project. No, 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 no! We are just about to get started with it. So, from here, we'll have to organize all of the belts up to this level, distribute them between 52.5 manufacturers, and then after that, we'll have to figure out what the heck to actually do with these control rods. But TLDR, all of them will be going back to base. One way or another, we'll be figuring that out. But one step at a time here. <laughs> 50 plus manufacturers is a big deal, yo. So let's get things set up and develop a plan here. Oh boy, and I've been planning here, and dude, this is gonna look so cool, I actually cannot wait to complete this. So, I just put down a couple manufacturers here. Only like 30, like no big deal. Because I wasn't exactly sure how we're gonna go about this, so I decided just to copy the design we have downstairs, which is amazing, where we just have uh, the items overflowing through the middle here, and this is so compact and so efficient, it's like, yo, let's go for it. So we're doing the same thing up here. Problem being, well, <laughs> we can only fit 30. So I was like, wait a second though, we need like another 22.5 more. How do? Well, first thought, I was like, well, hello, Mr. True Station. Could you not be here? I was considering moving this. And then I was like, no, I'm pretty lazy about that stuff, so <laughs> that's not. Instead now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have another stack of 10 manufacturers above here, and another stack of 10 over here, so there'll be like two extra towers here and over there, and then this will break up like the design of the roof by having an open concept train station. And dude, that's gonna look so cool, I can't wait. Now I'll also leave room in the front here for a huge piece to have like a big mural here. And then over here it'll look a little bit different. Probably like a sloped roof that goes up to this stage, like just right in there. And then the, maybe like a nuclear symbol right on that giant wall. And yeah. I think we got a pretty good plan. Oh no, autosave, don't do this to me. No, no, they last like 30 seconds. I wanna show you one more thing. Ah, but there's no fighting it. I suppose this is a good time to leave a like. Oh, wait, are we free? We're free, okay, good. So then the next thing, which is super, super nice about this last stage of the pro uh, project, is we don't need many items. All we have for the inputs of these 52 manufacturers is just four belts. So, like, G-G-E-Z. And better yet, since we're going with this design where we don't move the train station, we have all of this free space to do low balancing and emergency drainage systems and all that fun stuff. So this is great. Dude, I'm, I'm pretty hyped. Now, you know what? Let's just build the rest of the manufacturers first. Then we'll figure out how to load balance these things over. But pretty much all we have to do with them is divide every line into five for each of the five systems. Because there's one system here of ten, so five on each side. Another system of ten, another system of ten. And then the other two systems of ten up above. So yeah, just dividing lines into five. Shouldn't be too bad. But we're gonna have to bring stuff up as well to the next floor. Could we possibly get rid of this? And that's a negative ghost rider. It happens to be a track there. Can that not be there? 
Can't go the other direction. There's nothing there. It's looking like that's as close as things can get over here. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. We'll figure it out later. YOLO. <laughs> We're gonna move forward with the assumption we can figure it out. And man, you know what? Sometimes just figuring it out is the best solution. Because you end up with something unexpected like this beauty. Where through some crazy belt shenanigans, I managed to get all the belts up to these 20 manufacturers here. And how I did that is I brought all the items down here back to the end of the factory over there after doing some load balancing through this bridge where I split everything up and brought everything over into this overflow system and boom, whole system ready to go. And man oh man, was it fun trying to figure out how to split four belts in half in one tile. And Puzzle Master McGibbs did it again. So now, all of the manufacturers are all hooked up. And yeah, it's not really worth mentioning the ones on the bottom because they're just the same process. Simple stuff, not even a problem at all. And the low balancing wasn't too bad either. We just had to split each of the four belts into five equal parts and we managed that with this little balancer here. Where we have a merger, a splitter that splits things in half, that splitter over there splits the belt in three, where a third of it goes back to here, and then, yeah, this one over here splits things in three as well. Cool beans? Cool beans. Math totally works out to make every belt that leaves here 20% of the original belt. And I just stacked that design up four times and done. Only kind of weird thing is I have some of the outputs merged back together just to go up to that second floor where I just split them again. And that's just what I showed you up there. And then the final product ends up going this way to this wall down over here and then maybe we'll have like a train station or something or I don't know. We'll figure that out a little bit later. A uh, next order of business now that we have all the manufacturers hooked up is to turn everything on. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't get ahead of yourselves, guys. We have to connect this up to our emergency sinking system where pretty much if everything ends up breaking with this, we have a way to dump all the nuclear materials into awesome sinks and actually be able to fix this whole factory. And the way to turn on the emergency system is way, way, way far away from the actual nuclear facility itself, so it's all safe. So just give me another boop to figure all this out. And just like the rest of the things, everything was brought through. I figured it out and got it out. So now all of the stuff that ends up here, the encased uranium cells that end up on these belts. If we need to shut everything down, we can shut down all these machines and these belts will bring everything to a resource sink. So like with every single stage in this nuclear facility, if things go wrong, we can turn off the rest of the facility and now we have belts for all the nuclear material to end up going to a resource sink. So we can clear it, we should, quote unquote, be okay. The only thing that will cause us a little bit of radiation tickles is going to be when radioactive material is trapped inside machines like a refinery. Because say there's like, I don't know, let's just check this right now. Say there's like 49 uranium out of the 50 there, right? Well, it's not gonna go into a belt, it's stuck into this machine. So, worst case scenario, these machines are a little spicy. But generally speaking, if we have enough healing items, we should be okay to fly around here. It should be relatively safe. <sighs> what was saying that? I guess it's time, eh? I'm actually so scared. Yeah, but no, it's time, brother. We are gonna turn this whole thing on. We're gonna let it come to life. We're gonna make all of the nuclear stuff. <laughs> You see, I, I don't want to do this because once we do this, like I was saying with the nuclear material, material getting stuck in machines, this place will be irradiated to a degree pretty much forever once we do this. So I'm a little spooked by it. But we gotta try it out eventually, eh? All things considered, it all should work out fine. The only other thing, oh, wait a second, two things actually. <laughs> I will delay this until the end of days. Two things. We gotta get the uranium down to the entry port down there, and also I need like 200 freaking inhalers on me in case of emergency. So one more second. Okay, now there's literally no other d delays, no other excuses we have to do this. We have the medical inhalers, we have our hazmat suit, the trains are all running. 
Except for the one. The one that will start it all. The nuclear chew. Alright, brother. It's time to bring in the spice. Let's see what happens. Please. Just everything work out. No problems. Okay? Okay. Is it moving? Oh, yeah. It's moving. Getting that first load of spice in. Mm -hmm. Don't hurt me too bad. Well, we're gonna see what happens now. Hello, spicy boy. Ah! Too much spice. Be gone, demon. All right, and let's head downstairs. So all of that spice is gonna end up going to the first floor. Let's go. Good. It's going to overflow first into the awesome sinks, just as of the emergency backup. And then the rest is on overflow to go into the refineries. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's going all into this first set of refineries over here. Since we're not using the full capacity of our sulfuric acid set up here. Not yet, anyway. Oh god. The buildings become spicy. Ooh, and we got our first pellets. Dude, all right, all right. Also, it doesn't seem like the buildings get radioactive when there's items in it. So that's pretty cool. I think it's just the stuff that comes out. So that's super cool. All right, and then the same situation up here. First, everything goes towards the awesome sink. That is priority. And the overflow goes to all the machines. Oh no, problem number one. Why you no go? Suit? What's going on? Left is overflow. Right is priority. There we go. This is not as like toxic as I thought it would be, which is nice. Like radiation levels aren't like blasting me out through freaking the roof. In fact, I think we could just put it on our exosuit again. You know, we get tickled a little bit, but that's okay. Now everything's going into these, all right. And here we're making these infused uranium uh, cells. Nothing's entering this yet, though. Why is it all radioactive? Oh, are they upstairs right now? What? Oh, it's a train. Okay, noted. The train's radioactive. Where are the cells? Hello? Oh, there they are. Oh, they're backing up to the resource sink. So I see, the emergency backup's down there. And now we just really have to wait. There's a lot of stuff that has to overflow before main production starts. That's all again for safety, right? And then, just so we can see our output, we'll disconnect the wire there. And then we can actually see some nuclear fuel rods being produced. Let's go. All right, and while we waited for things here, I just had to fix up the train because I really goofed it on the tracks and I had to end up turning the train station around, so that's just like moving the train stop to this side instead of the other side. Whoopsies! But now, all is well, and once this train comes in, everything starts to rock and roll. Because we have the electromagnetic control rods, and that will make all of the nuclear fuel rods themselves. And let's see, this is actually on unload, yes? Looks like it's probably just a little glitched out right now. Things should be moving. Should be grooving. There's supposed to be stuff in here. Hello? There's all the stuff at not the radiation. Radiation. Unload. Whoopsies. <laughs> it was supposed to be an unload. We'll get them next time. Wait, what are you? <gasps> this stuff. I knew you had the goods. I knew it. Give them to me. Give me more. No, oh, come on. My things. Didn't think I'd be train robbing today. We got him. We're good. Woo! Robbed myself. Feeling good, man. <laughs> All right, well, the train will do its thing, and then we will go ahead and activate our factory. Okay, now I finally checked over everything. Everything is set properly. And with this, We'll actually start making the fuel rods. It's happening, brother. It's happening. So far, I've also been monitoring all the other systems as well. And things are moving and grooving at the right pace too, so we are good there. 
and everything is working properly. No need for emergency stuff. Let's go! Only thing we're waiting on was the electromagnetic control rods. Everything else has been loading in. And we should be good to go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, bud. We're finally making fuel rods. Let's go! I'm freaking hyped. And with 52.5 manufacturers making the fuel rods, that means we'll be making 31.5 nuclear fuel rods per minute. And that can fuel up to 400-ish nuclear power plants. Oh boy. 31.5 per minute, brother. Look at that spice. Look at it. Feel the spice. Unlimited power forever. Forever. <laughs> forever. Forever and ever. All we have to do is make the nuclear power plants now. Oh, bud. We're so close to unlimited power. Wait. This one was blank. I thought it was already unlimited. Nope. We're doing fine. Everything's doing fine. Yes, dude. I am hyped. Let's see how many points these are worth, too. Oh my goodness. This is gonna be like a trillion points, right? Let's just see. We're at about 4,000 before, just idling, pretty much. And that was like 15 fuel rods at once. Ah, 1.4 million. Yes. That's a handful of tickets, brother. Cool. Well, we've done it. Everything seems to be working properly. We are a little low on beacons, so I'll have to check that out, but I'm sure it's nothing like super major. Checking on the main stuff, the nuclear stuff, our fail safes seem to be working just fine. Yeah, that's all good. That's all good. This is the output line. Fail safes are full. Good, good, good. I was looking around down here as well. It's looking fine too, dude. I like it. I like it a lot. Dare I say, I love it. Oh man, all right. Well, it's time for the final step then. Not dying. <laughs> oh my God. And for now, that's gonna be all here. So I'll spend a couple hours just running through this and troubleshooting, seeing if there are any potential issues. And then next time, we start on the actual big meme of the whole project, making the hundreds of nuclear power plants. Oh man. I am not excited, <laughs> but you should be because it's going to be a freaking cool time, brother. But anyway, yeah, again, that's going to be all here. So I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching, but have a fantastic rest of your day and bye bye.